Let's promote our force domain controller on Windows Server 2022. Before we start the video, I want to mention that this uh, particular video is part of a bigger series about Windows Server 2022, judging by the number in the title. So if you want to see uh, the other videos, you can go to my channel, to playlists, and you will find a playlist named Windows Server 2022 Mega Series. Also, if you enjoy the video or if it is helpful for you, then it would also help me a lot if you share it and like it. And if you want to get notifications of new uploads from me, then consider subscribing. Also, all the code and presentations that you see in my videos are on my GitHub page in a repository and you will find the link in each video in the description. So let's see uh, how we uh, can promote a Windows Server 2022 uh, server. Before uh, promoting, I usually like to make sure that the server name is set correctly and also the IP settings are set correctly. This is because it's much nicer to have the uh, correct name and IP before uh, making a server a domain controller. If those two are OK, then you can go ahead with the steps to promote the server to a domain controller. And in this video, besides that, I will also show you how to create a DNS reverse zone. So we also have a mapping from IP addresses to server names. And I will also show you how to create a basic group policy with a couple of firewall settings and enabling of remote desktop. And with that being said, let's go on the server and start the process. So I am um, on my DC01 server. And first, let's make sure that the name is correct. So I like this name, we can keep it. And also the IP address seems to be OK. So with this being done, then we can go ahead and install the Active Directory Domain Services role. This is done from the Server Manager. Just go to Manage, Add Roles and Features. Then in this screen, click Next. Next again. We already have this server selected. Here we need to select the second option and uh, add all the other prerequisites that it wants. Click next, next, next and install. And to install the role it should not take uh, more than two minutes by my estimation. I will come back when uh, it is finished on my side. And uh, at this point, the role is installed. We can close this uh, screen and we see that we have a new notification. So it is prompting us to now promote this server to a domain controller. And of course, it's doing this because when you install the role, it just copies all the binary files to this server. It doesn't actually promote the server to a domain controller. We have to do it after. So just click on this uh, link and the wizard will start. First, you see here we have uh, three options. The one that is selected is to add a domain controller to an existing domain. This is not the option for us because we don't have domain yet. The second one is to add a new domain to an existing forest, which also is not uh, the option for us because we don't have a forest yet. So the option that we can choose is add a new forest and we have to give it the root domain name. I will choose testcorp.local. You can choose whatever you want as long as it's a valid DNS name. We are not going to use this on the internet, so uh, be creative. I would suggest you go with something.local so you know that it's just for your tests. 
So after you are done, just click next. And here you have to set the forest and domain functional level and the maximum possible is Windows Server 2016. Uh, this, uh, since it's a new domain, we don't have to take care about the setting. You, we can leave it at the maximum. Usually this uh, value is the value of the lowest domain controller version you have in your environment. So if I had also a 2012 R2 domain controller, I would have to use this, uh, this option. Since I will only have 2022, I will go with the maximum, which is 2016. Now you have the choice to not install DNS uh, server, although I highly suggest you leave this checked because DNS is coupled with Active Directory. And one more thing you have to uh, set here is the directory services restore mode password. This is a password that you will set and you have to put it somewhere or remember it because you will not use it for a long time. But if a disaster will strike, then you will need it because with uh, this password, you can, for example, recover your forest or recover your domain or recover important objects uh, uh, from Active Directory. So set the password and please do not forget it. With the password set, let's click next. Here we don't have uh, what to do, so we are going to click next. And the next screen is to let us configure the NetBIOS domain name. Yeah, Windows Server still uses NetBIOS. It will generate one based on our DNS name and I'm happy with this. You can change it if you want. I don't want to change it, so I will click uh, next. In this screen, we can uh, configure the path to the database folder. So this is where uh, the Active Directory database will be stored. The second option is where the Active Directory logs will be stored. And uh, the third one is where the SysVol folder will be stored. And the SysVol uh, contains uh, group policies and uh, other script files that your uh, Active Directory clients need. I'm happy with the default, so I will click next. And at this point, we can review all of the settings that we made. We can also click on view script and uh, an Active Directory command with uh, the settings we chose will be generated. We don't need it, but you can save it if you want. Let's click uh, next and now it will go through the prerequisites check, which should be OK. And it is OK. So we can click install. And at this point, the promotion process is starting. This also should take maybe about three minutes, something uh, like this. So I will be back when it is finished and we can continue. And after it's done, it will also restart the server, as you can see from uh, the message that I got. And after everything is done, we will be prompted to log on on the domain controller. And as you can see here, now we are authenticating to the test corp domain. So I will uh, write the username, which is administrator. And the password that the local administrator used to have. And here we are, now we are on the domain controller. So the next uh, step in the video is to configure a DNS reverse lookup zone. To do this, just click on start, go to Windows Administrative Tools, 
and here you will find DNS. In the DNS console, click on the server. Then we go to reverse lookup zones. And to, at the moment we don't have any zone. So let's create one. New zone. We want a primary zone and we want to store it in Active Directory. Uh, for our scope, the replication is fine the way it is by default. So we can go next. Then uh, we want an IPv4 reverse lookup zone. So the default is also OK. And here we have to enter the network ID, which in my case, it's 192.168. Dot ten. Uh, for dynamic updates, uh, I urge you to leave the default because it's the most uh, secure. So click next and click finish. So in this moment, we have a forward lookup zone that maps from a server name to an IP. And now we also have a reverse lookup zone that maps from an IP to the server name but at uh, this uh, time there isn't any entry in this zone this is because the domain controller doesn't know it exists yet if we restart it then uh, the entry will appear but we can also force it now to make this entry by using powershell run powershell as administrator and we use the following command. Register DNS client. After the command runs, let's go back to DNS and you will see that after I refresh, a new entry appears. So now we can map this IP to this name. So this is it for uh, creating a reverse lookup zone. Now let's go ahead and also create a uh, default GPO with some basic settings. Again in the administrative tools, go to group policy management. Here let's expand the forest, then go in domains and on the domain right click create a new GPO. Let's call it uh, basic settings. I want these settings to apply to all computer accounts in the domain. Click OK. And you see that it's now created. So we can go ahead and actually make some settings. Just right click, then go to edit. And now we can uh, start to customizing it. Go to policies, to windows settings, then to security settings and uh, windows defender firewall. Here expand and you will find inbound rules. Just click uh, new rule and we are going to enable SMB. We are going to enable also ICMP and the remote desktop rules. All of them are already existing in group policy, so we can go ahead and select predefined. First, let's uh, get all of the file and printer sharing rules out of the way. Click next. Now we can unselect what we don't need, which is this, this, this. We leave the uh, next to alone. And then we unselect the other ones because we only want SMB and echo request ICMPv4. Click next. We want to allow the connection with uh, these ports. And the first two firewall rules are created. Now let's also do the same for remote desktop. Again, new, new rule, predefined. Here we are searching for remote uh, desktop. All three rules are needed, so just click next. 
and we are uh, basically done with firewall now i also want to set some remote desktop settings it's not enough just to enable the firewall and this can be configured from administrative templates go to windows components and find the remote desktop then go to session host and first uh, in the connections uh, tab we want to allow users to connect remotely click on enabled and press ok and we also want to set a certain security rule to make sure that everyone uh, follows it and uh, the last one is what you are looking for just enable this one And with uh, this uh, uh, also done, we should be okay with the, the basic GPO that we have just created. Now, all of the servers that will be placed in the domain and computers also will get these settings. So we can go ahead and exit. And now if we press F5 to refresh, and on the basic settings we go here on the settings tab, we should see all of our newly created settings. Unfortunately, the firewall rules are not appearing. I think this is maybe a bug or something. The server is not updated. I will make them again. If this happens to you also, please check. And if the firewall rules are not here, then please configure them and check that they appear in the settings tab. I will show you after I configure them again. Okay, so I set the firewall rules again and now as you see they should appear. And you see them here. All of them are okay. I'm not sure why they didn't appear the first time. I guess this is a bug. Not a good way to start a series about a new Windows Server version, but what can you do? So basically uh, this was uh, it for uh, promoting a domain controller and configuring DNS plus uh, GPO. In the next video we are going to also see how to install and configure a server core server. So stay tuned, subscribe to my channel to get notifications, like and share this video and thanks a lot for watching.